The vast Poyang Lake shimmers in the sun. Most local families make their living by fishing. This young man's name is Li Man Tang, and he is already an experienced fisherman. His home is near the foot of a nearby verdant peak. He heads for home at the end of the day, carrying his net and catch. Eighteen hundred years ago, another fisherman was seen on this road. He got lost following a creek when he entered a dense forest of peach trees. Deep in the forest, he discovered something he had never seen before. It was a dreamlike earthly paradise. The people lived in harmony, with no war or pain, and did not even notice changes in the times. This is only a story, but it made the mountain famous for the next 2,000 years. This is Mount Lu, and the story is called "The Story of Peach Blossom Spring" by Tao Yuan Ming. Lu Shan, or Mount Lu, became famous as a place of mystery. Legend has it that a man named Kuang Su became an immortal here. When people heard about it, they went to see him, but only found an empty house. Lu means residence in Chinese. After the story became popular, the mountain became known as Mount Lu, and was also known as Mount Kuang Lu. Mount Lu has been wrapped in mystery for two thousand years. What really made it famous was not the immortals. But the artists and poets who sought refuge here. Tao Yuan Ming, author of the story of Peach Blossom Spring, was one of them. He was the first in China. To describe a utopia in a literary work. Over the years that ensued, literati, after failing in their ambitions, came here to escape. Tao Yuan Ming was the most famous among them. Throughout his life, he had dreamt of living in seclusion. He was an example of someone who resisted social turmoil. Following him, many literary-minded people did the same. 
releasing themselves from worldly concerns and seeking the true meaning of life. Over the 1800 years since Tao Yuan Ming's death, Mount Lu has undergone repeated changes. In Chinese traditional culture, it has become one of the most famous mountains, both in human and romantic terms. Under the mountain, at the foot of five old man peaks, is a place surrounded by water on three sides. A brook gurgles through the pine trees and bamboo, in which is a row of buildings in traditional style. It was a sacred place to traditional men of letters, the White Deer Grotto Academy. Compared with ancient Europe, ancient China didn't have colleges in a real sense. The closest that China had to colleges were institutions like this academy. Among them, this was the oldest. It was founded in 940 AD, but was burned down during the war at the end of the Song Dynasty. Thanks to the efforts of Zhu Xi, famous Confucian scholar of the Southern Song Dynasty, the academy was rebuilt. With Zhu Xi as the lecturer, this academy topped the four best known. In some way, through his essay, Tao Yuan Ming had built a Shangri-La for literary escapists. In this way, Zhu Xi, with his White Deer Grotto Academy, built a hall of contemplation for all intellectuals under heaven. This academy the best during the Song and Ming for Confucian studies had something very special about it. Adamant academic pursuit, emphasis on admiral morality and behavior, and a unique style of management. Many famous scholars lectured in this place. The local history book contains the following paragraph. Many famous scholars gladly teach here, and a large number of students gladly learn. This place is a college town. Because of its openness, over 400 years ago, this most orthodox college in all of China welcomed the first visiting professor from abroad in Chinese history. Between 1595 and 1598, the famous Italian missionary, Matteo Ricci, lectured several times in this place. Matteo Ricci presented a world the students had never heard of. He brought fresh air into Chinese traditional culture. He didn't know that his lectures would lead to the first exchange between Chinese and Western culture. It was a pleasant beginning for Western thought on Mount Lu. This morning, Li Mantan gets up very early. 
he is to send fish to the restaurants that have been placing orders with him for years. He is walking in the mist along a bending mountain path. Although not very high, Mount Lu has a unique view, sometimes said to be the best under heaven. Ancient people had particular criteria when judging a view. A mountain has rocks as its bones, water as its soul, woods as its appearance, and a steep peak as its spirit. Even with one of these, it is a good mountain. Mount Lu has all of these features. Its bones, soul, appearance, and spirit are excellent. Among them, the waterfalls are the best known. More than 1,300 years ago, Tang poet Li Bai wrote, Its torrent dashes down 3,000 feet from high, as if a silver river fell from azure sky. This spectacular waterfall tumbles down from 155 meters above, breaking over the rocks into three sections. The upper part is like a silvery ribbon, the central part an explosion of water. The water then flows down into the lower part like a jade dragon. The beauty of Mount Lu lies not only on its landscape, it is more a town built on top of the mountain, a town of several hundred villas. The idea came from an idealistic British man He was a missionary named Edward Selby Little. One sunny afternoon in 1894, after sailing upstream along the Yangtze River in a boat, Little disembarked in Zhejiang, from which he made his way directly to Mount Lu. He came to look for a nice summer resort for foreigners working in China. His eyes lit up after he scaled one peak, a flat area, heavily wooded, very cool and very quiet lay before his eyes. It was a perfect place for building villas. He rented the area from the Qing government. He named it Kuling. Its Chinese name was Gu Lin a name that would become known by all. Little was a smart businessman. He made a huge profit from the real estate development of this place. He was also acknowledged 
as a businessman with fine tastes. In the contract to sell each lot, Little clearly specified that housing was not to exceed 15% of the total area purchased and the architectural style must be the style of the country the owner came from. The building is not very large and it is very compact. Following the terrain, fell into it.
path. Li Montang arrives at the restaurant. The proprietors are an old couple. The couple doesn't buy many fish. In this rainy season, tourists are few. They have a daughter at a graduate school elsewhere. In just a couple of months, she's going to graduate. The greatest wish the couple has for her is to get a good job. The temple they mentioned is called Nuona Pagoda Temple. All the temples on Mount Lu are small, but they are believed to answer prayers. Monk Hui Yuan was the first to arrive on Mount Lu. Different philosophies. By elaborating the differences between a secular life and religious pursuit, and by laying down Confucian rules of behavior for monks and nuns. The slope stands a magnificent hall. Inside the hall is the statue of deified Lao Tzu, a famous ancient Chinese philosopher. Incense sticks burn constantly. Both Buddhism and Taoism regard Mount Lu as a sacred place. This was not an accidental occurrence in history. It is closely related to Chinese feng shui doctrine. According to feng shui theory, the Yangtze River in the front symbolizes a dragon. Ho Yang Lake behind it represents a tiger. This combination is uniquely auspicious. Mount Lu itself resembles a dragon vein. Even so, luck was not always on Mount Lu's side. The country was war-torn during the Yuan and Ming dynasties and the Pure Land Buddhism declined considerably, leaving only two Buddhist temples and one Taoist temple struggling for survival. Things began to improve in the late 19th century when a significant religious change was on its way. With the coming of Western civilization, Christianity, Catholicism, the Orthodox Eastern Church, and Islam arrived. Mm -hmm. 
Bell chimes were heard in the morning and late afternoon, and so was the sound of the choir drifting in the air. A single mountain, a sacred place for six religious beliefs, was a kind of paradise. In every sense, Mount Lu is legendary. After experiencing so many events in history, nothing can change its composed disposition. Mount Lu continues its legend a thousand years old. 